following message is a presentation of Valley Metro Church, a community of believers dedicated to knowing God and making Him known. So John chapter 8, you know, a woman took her husband to the doctor. He was seriously ill and the doctor examined him and then asked the woman to wait, uh, the man to wait in the waiting room while he talked to the wife and he explained to the wife that the husband was very, very ill and that he might not make it. And he he did, however, present a plan to her. He said, there's some things that you can do, and if you're willing to do these things, I think there's an excellent chance that your husband can recover. uh, The doctor said to the wife that, uh, first, it's very important not to say anything to your husband that might cause him stress. So I want you to speak to him in a calm and very sweet tone of voice. Uh, I want you to make all of his favorite foods. I want you to offer affection to him throughout the day, meet his, his every need. And if you're willing to do these things, I believe there's an excellent chance that your husband uh, will recover. So the woman came back to the, the waiting room and the husband said, honey, what did the doctor have to say? And the woman said, he said you're going to die. <laughs> At least she told him the truth. And that's what we'll be talking about today, the truth. Jesus is telling us about the truth. John chapter 8, verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I'm going to read that one more time. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I'm also going to read you verse 34 here for context. Jesus says there, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word, and your scripture says that you esteem your word even above your name. Your word is more important to you than even your character and reputation. And so, Lord, we come to your word today expecting to hear from a holy and a perfect and a beautiful and a wonderful God. And, Lord, we know you will be honoring our attentiveness to your word. We know that you will speak to every heart here. We pray that we'd have ears to hear and a willingness to do that which you say to us today. We ask you to anoint our teacher today that... uh, these lips that speak only what you want to say and nothing else. And we just uh, give you the glory in advance for uh, your word, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One way to study a Bible text is to identify and understand the key words in that text. Because if you understand all the key words, you will, in fact, unlock the meaning uh, of the text. And that's what we're going to do this morning is pick out some key words. I've picked four key words from this passage. You, you may have read this before, but uh, what I think we're expecting today is by better understanding this text, we're going to not only understand what Jesus is saying to us, but how to live it out. Here's the four words that I chose out of this passage, and they are the words abide, disciples, truth, and free. Abide, disciples, truth, and free. So before we get into our first key word, one thing I want you to notice here is to, to whom Jesus is speaking. He's speaking to, the, to believers, those who believed Jesus. That's important. And so if you consider yourself a believer in the Lord Jesus this morning, this is addressed to you. It will also benefit and bless you even if you are not. But that is who Jesus is speaking to. And what does he say to these people? Well, he says, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And abide is our first key word. Abide, what does that mean? It really has two main meanings. Number one, it means to continue or persevere. And it also means to live or to dwell. You know, my wife Carrie and I, lately we've found our hearts broken again and again. Over the past year, three couples that we would count as friends have have filed for divorce. And and, and the men and the women in each of these marriages claim to be believers. There was no adultery in these marriages, so no biblical grounds for these divorces. And in each of these marriages, it happened to be the woman who was leaving. And they all said very similar things, which I would kind of boil down to, 
the, this, this idea that my husband will never change. And, you know, I know that's a common uh, theme in, in many marriages and in the, the minds of, of some wives that might be struggling and suffering. But uh, hold on to that, and I want to share a second story with you. Uh, Fifteen years ago, Carrie and I met a couple at a church we were attending down in Orange County. And the woman was always at church. She was always there on Sunday. She's always there at the midweek Bible studies and uh, always carrying her Bible, always, always reading her Bible. The husband we wouldn't see too often. He'd be there sometimes on Christmas or Easter. And, and by the way, we never want to disparage that. If somebody wants to come to church once a year, hallelujah. It's an opportunity for God to speak into their life. We don't want to look at that person and go, oh, you know, you only come on Easter. Well, we're glad they come on Easter, and I'm sure the Lord is as well. But this man, you know, he would come occasionally, but, but he had some issues, some issues with alcohol and drugs and some things that were causing great damage to the marriage. Um, uh, but this lady didn't do what the other three ladies did. No, she was abiding in the word. She was persevering in the word, continuing in the word. Now, on the face of it, that doesn't seem like much of a strategy for improving your marriage, but this is what she was doing, and we happened to bump into this couple. It had been many, many years since we'd seen them, and happened to bump into them recently, and uh, all I can say is the Lord had done a miracle. This man was now on fire for the Lord. They were more in love than ever. The children were blessed, but really, that's exactly what Jesus says will happen when we abide in his word, that there will be a freedom. A freedom from what? A freedom from sin. Sin was what was wiping out this marriage and what potentially wipes out any other marriage. And through the abiding in the word, uh, there was freedom from this sin and the marriage was restored and blessed. Now, as we said, the word abide means something else. It doesn't just mean to persevere or continue. It also means to live or to dwell, to live or to dwell. Think about the place where you live, an apartment, a house, wherever that is that you call home. There are certain things that that place represents to you. Uh, first, it would be a place that you go every day, hopefully. Uh, second, it's a place of refuge from the world. And finally, it's a place that you would commune with loved ones. And I think what Jesus is saying is he wants his word to be all those things to us, a place that we go every day, a place of refuge from the world. And, and a place where we can commune with God and also meet together with God as a family when we read his word together with our spouse and with our children. Did you know that the divorce rate among those who uh, uh, read the Bible together, the couples read the Bible together, pray together regularly, is something like 1%, as opposed to a divorce rate of 50% for those who profess to be Christians who don't do those things. God has in his word the answer to every question, the solution to every problem that we will ever have. His word teaches us about his nature and our nature and the plan that he has for our life. You know, I thought about this story uh, that John Rockefeller was reading his Bible and from the, some things said there, he realized there was oil in the Middle East and he was the very first one to drill for oil in the Middle East. And of course, he was at the time the the richest man in the world. You know, the point being, God's word contains absolutely everything we need for this life. This has been a presentation of Valley Metro Church. To hear more messages or to support future podcasts, please visit valleymetrochurch.com.